Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Simpilot and today we have an exciting one for you. We are taking a look at the Horizon Simulations 787-9 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is a freeware aircraft for Microsoft Flight Simulator. It is a modification of the default 787-10. That means in order to use it, you do need to have the Premium Deluxe Edition of Microsoft Flight Simulator. But I can uh, I can tell you now, if you do, you are in for a treat with this add-on. It is really remarkable. It uses the underlying systems of the default aircraft, which, as we know, are very good at this point. Uh, and it has retextured it and repurposed it into a 787-9. In this video, I'm going to talk you through some of the changes they've made. We're going to take a look at what I think of the visual model and the textures that they've done. Uh, and I'm also going to take it for a flight so we can check out the handling and see if it feels like the aircraft. It certainly uh, does a very good job of looking like. Absolutely gorgeous to look at. Really, really impressed with it. And we'll talk about all those little details on the textures in the video. This won't be a full tutorial on flying the 787-9. Uh, I will do lots of 787 tutorials, so do please subscribe to the channel and we'll be going through in detail how to operate this aircraft in your simulator. I am a real-world 787 pilot, but none of this is for any real-world use. It's just to give you some extra context on your home simulations. Right, let's get started. So let's take a look at the external model of the Horizon Simulation 787-9. Here we have it in the rather uh, pretty Virgin Atlantic livery. And what we're going to see is the differences over the, the 10 included with Microsoft Flight Simulator. I think it's really obvious as soon as you load it up, uh, at least it was to me, that there is a huge amount of work has gone into the, the detailing of the, the textures, which is, funnily enough, exactly what I, was, I asked for um, on the, the last video. I really wanted to see a bit of an improvement. The shape of the default 78710 is is good, but the, uh, the textures are a little bit lacking. And here we have uh, a really remarkably good set of uh, improvements for this aircraft. As you go around, you'll see that there is the grime around the doors. You can actually see that if you look quite carefully, there is a faint outline of the jet bridge, which would attach at the forward exit here sometimes. If it does, it's very close to the angle of attack sensor, which should look slightly different. That's usually there. Um, but yeah, yeah oh, sorry, it's usually there. So uh, usually they, they connect at doors two back here. But it's nice to see it done uh, done properly with a bit of grime. Doors 2, as you can see, also has the grime as well. Um, and they've also put in all the labels that have been missing. So I, I talked in my video, and I do have a video if you're interested, where I do a full walk around of the 787-10, um, as we would before every flight on the real aircraft. And I talk about some of the exterior models, a bit of an introduction to the aircraft. Um, so yeah, do please watch that if you're interested. But today we're going to focus on the changes of horizon simulation. So like I say, a bit more grime and dirt, which is really, really good. You can see as well all these little rivets uh, going around the aircraft, which just really, really brings it to life, makes it pop a little bit more uh, off the screen. I particularly like all these decals. So now we have the static port decals um, all written in properly. Uh, these are the overpressure vent valves. These are the static ports. Uh, and over here we have the negative pressure relief valve, which is actually written on them. I'm not sure it's always written on them, but it's uh, yeah, lots of different labels. Boeing loves labeling things on the aircraft. As you can see, everything has a label, and this is true and something I've noticed on the real aircraft compared to the Airbus a lot more. Here we go. We have instructions and warnings about the door handle. Uh, as you come down, these are the inlets for the cabin air compressors and the pa air conditioning packs. And as you can see, warnings everywhere, and this is true on the real aircraft. Um, they have they've just written everything <laughs> that, that you could hurt your hand on or something or get too close to. And they've written it in small text, and it's great to see that all brought to this model. Um, yeah, it's just great. It just brings it to life in the way that the, the default one looks great as a shape, and the uh, systems have been improved greatly, but they were just lacking a little bit on these details. And here we have such a great model now. You can see all the latches on the nose cone, uh, these little... Um, they just sort of pop open they're quite quite straightforward really for that composite nose cone although of course the whole airplane is composite now you've got the um, lettering and uh, registration on the nose gear door and even coming into the door we've got now the um, charts and warnings and black cards really really impressive this is just great really nice to see again it's like a model airplane isn't it that you, that you build it doesn't really come together until you get all the decals onto it and uh, here we have have seen that finally arrive so i think it it looks fantastic and some of these liveries they provided are really great i must uh, do a comparison i'll see if these these wheels are different but certainly these textures are in the middle and i'm sure this tire is a new texture as well that looks just just fantastic yeah really good this is also a 787-9 so that what's the difference between a 9 and a 10 when you do the walk around 
well very very little it has the same wing it's essentially the same fuselage just a little bit shorter on this 9 variant some of the key things about the 9 is it's uh, it's uh, a bit lighter as well and a bit shorter um, but that's pretty much about it it also holds a little more fuel than the dash 8 version so it has the longest range of the three of the uh, the 787s but yeah it's uh, largely the same you don't really you wouldn't really know walking around it unless you specifically stood back and looked the only other difference um, is as you move to the main gear but as the default 787 doesn't have it modeled um, yeah it's not going to be modeled here either uh, which is good uh, which is correct there's a hydraulic bit here on the tens that isn't here uh, but yeah texturing all improved around every single aspect warning panels some they added some uh, piping into the the main gear bay a little bit sterile before some streaks and grime on the underneath of the wing as i said in my last video the bottom of the 787 wing is uh, is relatively clean and you can see it here there, there isn't a lot there it's it's got these access panels <laughs> lots of stickers but but that's about it there isn't much sticking out it is a very very clean design um, and that's of course on purpose this airplane is meant to be as efficient as possible so when i loaded this model up i wanted to check one thing in particular and that was that it had this red disc out here um, so yeah, it's great to see it. That's just spot on for the, the real aircraft. Um, it's it's fantastic. They've done a great job. They've also improved the exterior lighting, which is something we'll look at as we go through the video. But you can see here much brighter, much clearer nav lights, and we'll look at the uh, the strobe lights, which are quite iconic uh, on the 787. Um, once we get it into the air, here's the the rear nav lights. So clearly they've done a, a really fantastic job. Just look at that that silhouette there. So this brings me to the shape of the aircraft. Like I say, it's about at this distance that you can really tell which airplane you're looking at um, because they're all so similar. But yeah, this is a, uh, a shorter version. Some people will consider it the best looking version. I um, I think uh, it's a bit like 320 of the family. It's the middle, the middle one. It's the most popular by far, actually, the most delivered aircraft. It's very, very popular um, airplane. It, it's very efficient, goes a long, long, long way and holds a decent amount of passengers. The 8 is a little bit short. Um, and the 10 is obviously a little bit bigger, burns a bit more fuel, uh, but doesn't uh, isn't always used by a lot of airlines. Uh, where the 9 is, is the is the sweet spot really. But the 10, some people uh, are using it to replace sort of triple seven, the smaller triple sevens as they as they age would be one way to view that aircraft. But this aircraft is sort of uh, fits into a nice category. Great job on all the wing texturing. Again, it looks just like it. it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, wing on the 787. But let's have a look at these engines. So another key change is that you get uh, the option to have Rolls-Royce or the GE engines. And here we go, proper decals. It's properly labeled as a Rolls-Royce engine. Rolls-Royce always write that right on the side there um, in big, big letters, so you can't miss that. But then they've got the warning decals. We've got the, uh, the line to de delineate where you need to stand behind. The reason for this is if there was anything going on where you needed to do some um, uh, Lots of aircraft have like start valves, things like that on the side of the engine whilst it's running. So it's a way that you know you must not step forward of that line. But realistically, you do not want to be near this aeroplane when that massive engine is running. And um, this is a big, big, big engine. It's, uh, if, uh, for context, you probably your head height would be about maybe somewhere down here. So you really do look up and into it. But then a good job, new spinners uh, and new animations, which we'll have a look at when we start up the engines. But yeah, overall, this is a great looking, uh, great improvement on the engine. Slightly new, this is the modifier, there used to be a vent here and that's gone now. But yeah, they've got all the uh, oil access, fluid panels and things like that. Absolutely brilliant. Moving around the back, they've done the nice staining. I haven't quite seen, this is quite a, a vibrant tail cone sort of pattern. <laughs> I haven't seen one quite that strong, but uh, yeah, it's, I'm sure it's possible. You get this from the just, this is the hot air section. So that's why all the metal goes, this nice sort of cool staining colours that you get. And as we look in the back and the side, just looking around the fan, just really nice. Um, but pretty much as before is this this cone is is the is the big change and the pylon as well it was really it's, i don't want to understate how much work must have gone into this this looks absolutely fantastic and is a big step up from the the default textures and this is again exactly what i was hoping to see someone do for the 787 just look at it really really nice all these pipes all the uh the grime the wear looking great as you get it into the air you'll see even more um so we get more uh dirt around the the rear panels we've got the this is the control panel for the cargo doors so yeah that would be pretty grimy that's constantly being used on turnarounds and uh, for loading on the bags and so on uh, you've got uh, yeah lots and lots of uh, <laughs> grime coming out the back here this is the um, art pressurization valve there's another one at the front and on the tail interestingly they've also got this system 
This is a system to do with managing the laminar flow over the stabilizer. Very little information is known about it, but there, I believe that's uh, that's part of it. So that looks uh, looks really great, and then a bit more grime on the tail. And as we come up to the tail fin, I have talked about this. The 787 has static ports on the tail. They're called static ports. It's nothing to do with electricity. It's to do with air pressure. So they're measuring the air pressure or the ambient air pressure around the aeroplane. Um, so that's called the static pressure. You also have the dynamic pressure, which is the pressure on the front of the airplane as it moves through the air. 787 has two of these static ports on the tail on each side, and they are correctly marked and labeled on here. Um, so I do look for these on the walk around just to make sure that there's nothing obviously damaged up there. But obviously, if you think about it, it's quite a long way from where you're doing your walk around. But these are used for the aircraft to sense pressure differential on the tail, and therefore it can automatically apply rudder for you during takeoff in gusty conditions. Very, very clever just remove some of the uh, the work for the pilots and just helps um, adjust it, uh, itself automatically it's not perfect you still need to apply rudder but yeah but if you think about it you'll be down somewhere down here doing your walk around <laughs> um, yeah there we go great job on this livery though i really like the the shade of red they've really got that just right and the other side is obviously more of the same so overall the visual model they've improved the textures by a colossal amount i think it looks just fantastic now this is getting easily into uh, some of the top level of, of visual models that we've seen in the sim which is great and like i say the uh, the visual model of the 10 is great the default 10 but it just missed those textures and i think this has really caught that and they've also done a great job converting it down to a nine just shrinking it a little bit the silhouette of this aircraft um, if we look at those wings just gorgeous it's really really swept wing this is a quick airplane it cruises at decimal eight five which is similar to what the 747 400 would do um, whereas there's some aircraft that go just a little bit slower they tend to cruise at 8.4 for their long range stuff but yeah very very nice so here we are on the flight deck of the horizon simulation 787-9 not much changes up here for these aircraft uh, it's really down to operator spec if there's any different systems the uh, the dash 10 and the dash 9 and the dash 8 all have essentially the same flight deck very very similar um, it's not got any texture mods at the moment, I believe. So this is still basically the default textures. This is downloaded from flightsim.to, this version that I'm using. I believe there are some texture mods that are already out there, but uh, we'll have to try those out in a future video. So we are pretty much working with the, uh, the default aircraft systems, which as we know, have been updated a little while back, a few months ago now, and they are very good, very impressive for a default aircraft. Some things that have been added in, and some of these are uh, credited elsewhere from previous mods as well, but something we do have is if we go onto the EFB, the electronic flight bag, we have a doors page now. And here we can open up the doors, so we can open up the cargo, the rear entry and the uh, entry one left. Now these are just some basic ones, you can't actually do the others sadly at the moment, but there we go. This is not a real page in the aircraft of course, this is just a replication of the systems doors page. We go systems, door. And that's what the real aircraft has and you can see it displays the same sort of thing um, but yeah it's nice to have control over those without having to remember the keyboard shortcut so that's pretty good uh, also we have our performance and they have added in the correct performance for the 787-9 which i really like so we will do a takeoff in a moment and try out the numbers and see if it feels roughly similar to what we'd expect from a 787-9 on takeoff Something I've noticed is that you can also just tap here for zero fuel weight and enter it again and then it appears which is really good. So you can see we're actually taking off, it's very heavy, 207 tons. I might need to readjust that for when we come back in for the landing. This will not be a full tutorial as I said earlier. Um, this is just going to be me just getting the airplane ready to go looking at the differences. We will be doing a tutorial um, later on uh, or soon on this channel. So do stay tuned for that if you'd like to see my full uh, take off the landing tutorial but anyway there we go so I'm just loading in some of the performance stuff so if I go through to the takeoff page and as I said we can now um, I've got my runway already loaded so I'm going to copy the FMC data uh, it won't give us an intersection as far as I'm aware right now but we can choose fact we know it's dry outside I'm going to leave the wind as calm so I just put zero slash zero outside air temperature is 15 degrees Q nature one zero three that's how I pretty much always do my sims and we'll see optimum so what i'm expecting this is a we're taking off at a reasonable weight 207 tons but that's light for this aircraft it can actually take off in the uh over around 250 240 tons depending on your fit so um we expect to take off from a four kilometer runway like we have here at heathrow i'm imagining flat five uh climb two and take off two 
I, again, there'll be more videos where I talk about what that actually means. I'll just put in a CG as well. Um, but for now, that's what I would expect. Um, and we do need to give it um, a proper wind. It doesn't like wind, so let's do zero. There we go. Um, yeah, you can't do zero size zero. <laughs> I'm still getting very used to all the formatting on Boeing. There's a lot of specific formatting for these data entries. So we'll, we'll be <laughs> learning a lot of that. And now the calculate button comes to life. So if it's not there, then you've, you've misentered or have not completed a, a section of this properly. So we hit calculate. This is a lot quicker than the real aircraft, um, but there we go. And that's good. Flap 5 is what I expected. V1, 154, 158, 165. Yeah, pretty reasonable for an aircraft at this weight. And I wanted to see takeoff 2, which we've got. So, yeah, pretty pretty sensible and a very high flex. So this is using not much power at all. This, this is about as low power as you can get a takeoff on the 787. So, yeah, that's what you'd expect. This is an aircraft with uh, uh, not much weight and a long runway. So that's what we want to see. I will do a, a full video on the 787's takeoff performance. It's a very unique aeroplane, and you'll notice that if you ever see them taking off, that they are almost always at the lowest aircraft on climb out, even lower than the A380, and there's a reason for that. So I'll just send this output over here. There it is, numbers have loaded. I'm hoping to accept it. There it is, good. Um, and we do need the CG. Just enter that. And there we go, little green FMC pre-flight complete. It's very good. I'm so impressed with the avionics on this add-on. Uh, sorry, on this freeware. Um, like I say, I know that this is the avionics from the default, but it's excellent to have. We're very, very lucky. Uh, so V2, 165. I'm going to put up into this window here. All the way down. Doesn't do it automatically. It's not an Airbus. LNAV, VNAV. Got the heading. Got the altitude. Flight directors are on, so I should see V2, blank. Toga armed and LNAV VNAV armed and there's the altitude of 6,000 feet. Now something else that's different for this add-on for the horizon simulations is the V-bar option for this flight director. I personally dislike this style of flight director. It's great that they have added the feature and um, I don't know how to remove it uh, so if anyone can tell me <laughs> please do because I will be reverting that back to the normal sort of crossbar as soon as I can figure out how to do it. I'm sure it's something really obvious it usually is um, or it's written over here I don't know but there we go. Uh, talking about performance, we can also see, of course, we have DTO2, which means we've had a percentage reduction on the takeoff thrust to the lowest, and we've got 50 degrees as the, uh, the selected temperature. If I go back into the index and perf, I'm looking for the climb 2, so I'll select climb 2 on there as well. So this is a really derated takeoff, which is, again, what you'd expect on a, a day like this. Another little detail of the avionics in the 7 8 in Microsoft Flight Simulator now this aft uh, left pump does not show a pressure light so I'm just pressurizing the aircraft and we would normally turn on the fuel pumps about now but you can see it doesn't light and that's because it doesn't have a low pressure problem because it's actually supplying the APU so it runs automatically if we, as we have electrical power so it's very good and you can see it there running in the avionics page just another example of the detail that we're getting out of this it's really really good very impressed so we're about to push back now and just showing you here the beacon is now on and you get that iconic 787 glowing lights. The 787 doesn't have any strobing lights, they're just sort of these super bright LEDs that uh, blink on and off like this. Really distinctive, you can see as, as, as far away as you can see the lights, you can tell it's a 787. Um, the 737 MAX has a few similarities but it is not quite exactly the same because the uh, strobe lights which we'll see later are also like that. So again that is a modification that the Horizon team have done onto this aircraft which is really great to see because it's a really iconic bit of the aeroplane um, so I'm glad the Horizon team have, have made that change really great. So added in with the textures this is just a super super visual model. Time to start up the engines then and we can do both on a day like this on the 787 so we'll put both to start and both the master switches or the fuel control uh, switches to run. Now we have new uh, wing views included in this and we can also use them to enjoy the new animation of the fan blade spinning up on these Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 engines, both of which have been added in by the Horizon Simulations team. So here we go, very nice indeed.
So now we've got the flaps out at five, we can just take a closer look at some of those textures. And yeah, look at that, you've got the, the streaks on the leading edge of the wing. Really, really nice. It's just, we're, we're really lucky to see this come out as freeware for the simulator. Look at the engine, that leading edge. It's it's just great. It's, uh, it's so nice to see. Really, really adds a lot to this model. Same for the leading edge of the uh, nacelle on the engine as well, you can see here. Bit of streak, bit of. They often get sort of scratches and polished in different ways from little repairs or scuffs or inspections. So you you rarely see a completely uniform uh, engine intake, and uh, yeah, it it has that believable sort of look. A bit of wear on it, bit of scratches, bit of scuffs. Very nice. So let's taxi out to the runway. I'm going to put the taxi light on and uh, release the parking brake. We're going to make a right turn here. Now they've improved the taxi sort of model to to replicate a dash nine. Now the difference between the Dash 10 and the Dash 9 to taxi is uh, is rather limited again, but of course one is much longer so you have to be very careful. None of the 787 family have a, uh, a camera system in them at all. The 787 will typically break away on its own power, so what I mean by that is you just release the parking brake and it should start to creep forward, especially at a weight like this, uh, under 250 tons, but it's not quite doing it, but that's often the case if there's a little bump or a, uh, uh, you're in a slight dent in the ground after you push back, so just spool up those engines slightly. We aim to keep the N1s below 30-ish percent is typical. Um, it's about the same as on the Airbus, but these are big engines, so you do have to be aware of that. And there we go, it's moving straight away, so that's pretty good actually, pretty believable. Um, and it should roll around. Now you do need power in the turn on a 787 on all of them, so let's see what happens. So I'm just going to trickle the power on, 27%, I'm doing a tight turn here. So it could run out of steam. It should manage, I would have thought, with 30%. Yeah. That's really very good. I like it. I like it a lot, actually. I'm impressed. I wasn't uh, wasn't expecting it to be that close. But yeah, you need to enter the turns on the 787 with a bit of speed. If you don't enter with sort of 7-8 knots, um, then you can find yourself running out of energy. On a wet day, you, just, you may not have that option and you need to have the power on. But unlike the Airbus, which you can leave at idle thrust to go around the bends and still have to apply brakes, uh, the 787, if you go into a turn at idle thrust, low speed, it will run out of steam as you go around. So they seem to have caught that quite well. If I idle those engines now, we're at full lock, so we've got that nose gear right the way around. And I'm imagining, let's see what happens, it should, and we're idle power, remember, yeah, it just runs out of steam. Very good, very impressive that. They've done a really good job. So yeah, tight turns from a standstill on the 787 to taxi are not that uh, not that comfortable, especially like I say, near an apron or a ramp. Luckily here we have an option. Now we've got the tail round, we're not uh, jet blasting anywhere. But as you can see, if we turn the aircraft to try and get back to that taxiway line, uh, we would soon be providing a lot of jet blast over ramp area and these are big, big, big engines, so something to be aware of. The taxi light on the 787, as you can see, is on the nose. It doesn't turn with the nose. So in the daylight, you can just taxi with the taxi light. But uh, uh, I'm going to do a lot of tutorials on all these things later on. As you know, the channel, <laughs> we go into a lot of detail on things. But uh, yeah, in the daylight like this, we also have the runway turn offs if it was dark. Good. So yeah, pretty good. So now once it gets going, I'm going to get it up to sort of uh, 10, 15 knots. And then I should be able to leave the power alone. Um, but we won't be able to get to that speed really until we're after the turn. So let's go and do a 90 degree turn down here as we're going to head out to the runway. This map, by the way, the 787 does have this. It's very good. Um, it, it does also label the taxiways. This is sort of a graphic of the, the airport. So not quite as useful as what the real aircraft has, but still pretty cool to have at all. I like the fact it's modelled. You don't need to do a brake check in the 787. Just one of the many, many differences over the Airbus, but there we go. So now we're going to go do right here and then a left we'll taxi out down to depart from the runway in front of us runway 27 left so let's see if i sit here let's see if we can judge the turn right now you have to oversteer in a 787 so we'll get the nose right past we're doing eight knots that's about right maybe a little bit fast just dab, dab the brakes get a little deceleration symbol showing you that you're gonna have to get ourselves over this center line get us that back window and then we'll go around from there a little bit sporty perhaps but there we go and i've left the power at idle so it's running out of steam so yeah very good this is this is a, a similar experience to what i would expect on a 787 very very cool so let's get ourselves down to the runway and we'll get ourselves into the air okay so time to get into the air 
We're sat on the end of the runway. We have our performance data in. We got our flaps out at five. We're going to take off and make a left turn back around uh, using LNAV. So what am I expecting from the takeoff performance of this aircraft? As I said, we wanted to see how the aircraft handles the performance of a 787 and what I'm expecting is with light winds long runway we're very derated we're at takeoff two and uh, high temperature I'll talk about those in another video but the result is we're a low power takeoff you can see there it's uh, it's got a very low target EPR of 67 uh, sorry TPR of 67 so we are going to try it out and I'm expecting to rotate quite far down the runway potentially even in the other ends touchdown zone because we've got all that room to play with so let's get going and see how it goes parking brake released I'm going to set 1.2 on the TPR, sorry, 20, I should say, which is somewhere there. That's good. And then we can press toga. And then we get thrust ref. Engines accelerating. We have a bit of forward pressure on the yoke. And there they are. That seems like a low TPR to me, but this is an unusual configuration. We are very light for a, a 787. But there we go. Rolling along now. As we get to 80 knots, putting that yoke to neutral. Thrust goes into hold mode, which is correct, which means we can now manipulate it if we want to, but we don't. We're accelerating slowly down the runway, pretty accurate. Yeah, this is about what you'd expect to see on a long runway like this. It's going to use up most of it. That's the 787 for you. Maximum efficiency. If you want to rotate, it made the V1 cool, not the rotate, which is what you'd expect bit heavy on the rotation there that's not quite as I'd expect it to be but there we go a little bit sensitive and a little bit more force needed but there we go positive rate gear up just trimming it out we should put that airplane symbol on the target reference line and now we can start moving towards the flight director guidance queue there's thrust ref now speed and L nav with the flight director so it feels nice now it's in the air just that unstick was heavier than I had expected so uh, that's a bit interesting. It could be to do with the way I've set up the, the trim. Something to try out in future streams. So how does it feel now we're underway? Pretty good, actually. Yeah, it's uh, the aircraft is a uh, relatively heavy on the yoke. So I'm expecting it to, to feel like that, really. And it does fly very similar to an Airbus. So that was a pretty typical 7-8 takeoff roll. Very long, very drawn out. And just the rotation was a little bit not as I expect. But there we go. Flaps can now go to 1 as we're above the 5. Retrimming as we accelerate, you do have to trim despite all the fly-by-wire controls on this aircraft. And now flaps can go up. Let's put an autopilot in. Around the turn, I'll update the heading bug. Unfortunately, something you do have to continuously do on the 787. It has not got a clever system than that. Around we go. Oh, which is going to become a nuisance. <laughs> And it's in climb two mode, which is correct. So yeah, performance wise, a light aircraft like this, yeah, I think about you could get very good climb rates out of it at this stage. It remains to be seen and we'll, we'll test it out more as we fly it on the channel, um, how the performance is in terms of fuel flow and upper level climb performance. But for a takeoff, that takeoff roll was great. The acceleration rate was great. And like I say, it just felt very heavy to unstick. I'm not sure why I didn't unstick straight away. There we go, we're about to level off. Let's take a look at some more of those modified lights now. So I'm going to have the beacon, nav and logo lights on. Let's put the wing lights on. We'll have the turn off lights. We've already got the strobe and taxi lights and we'll put the uh, all the landing lights on. Let's jump outside. And here we go. Excellent news. The, the lighting is fantastic. You notice, of course, that middle nose light and the taxi light don't show up. But we've got the runway turn offs, those wing landing lights. As we come out to the edge, you've got the nav lights nice and bright and then the strobe uh, or the anti-collision it doesn't flash it does this pulsating on off there it is that's it's super bright i mean like i say it stands out a long way the 787 you've got it on the wingtips and then we also have it on the tail for the tail anti-collision which does remain on with this sort of or oh, it's not on it's actually a separate light uh, you have the strobing and then you've got the position lights there so we have wingtip lights facing backwards and we also have them on the tail there so yeah really nice all works as you'd expect they've done a fantastic job and you can see there the wing light shining back on the wing uh, largely 
largely unused on, on aircraft these days. Uh, once upon a time, it was used to ins inspect the wing for ice, things like that. Can be used to increase your visibility when you're taxiing around in fog as well. But the fact is, from the flight deck of the 787-9, you're not really going to see much of the wing at all, and you're not even going to see the part of it. Um, you, you, basically, you can just see the very tip if you if you really work hard. So there we go. Beautiful job though. Aircraft looks fantastic, and the lights are a big big improvement. So at this rate we have pretty believable speeds, we're now down, I've taken off some fuel, so we're down at 166 tonnes just over, and uh, the clean speed around 220 knots, yeah, pretty believable. Uh, the flat limiting speeds are shown down here, so we can actually get flat one out at 260 on the 787-9, so let's start winding the speed back to the up speeds. Now the aircraft is incredibly slippery, and this is something I want to see here, uh, it will, if you're doing anything sort of 800 feet per minute down at these speeds the real aircraft won't really decelerate it's remarkable it is the slippiest airplane I've ever seen it's quite heavy it's got very swept wing and it just does not slow down like you would think it's certainly nothing like the A320 does so if anything I'd say at a thousand feet per minute down idle thrust uh, I think the this aircraft is a little bit more draggy than the the real one um, it's pretty close it's pretty close to be fair and this is quite a light we're quite light at 166 tons but even so um at a thousand feet per minute the speed can actually start to accelerate again so uh, yeah it's quite a quite a notable thing so this is perhaps a, a tad more draggy but the speeds are realistic um and the the fact that we're doing 220 knots clean at this weight because we are quite light pretty good let's go to flat one Oh yeah, of course, it wants us to do the checklist. So, uh, the recall, now that's left, um, well, checks complete norm is good. Auto brakes at three, landing data, we've got VRF 25 and 146. Approach briefing is completed. So that's the descent checklist complete. Again, remarkably good avionics modeling. I cannot stress that enough. And that is down to the working title uh, and the default 787. That is included. If you have premium deluxe, you get all of these avionics included. So. Uh, you don't need this mod for that but this mod is providing us with this airplane and the, the beautiful differences that we've talked about so far all right there's 220 knots now let's wind the speed back to the one speed and we can get rid of that uh check this incomplete norm as we've now done it and we'll get out flat five flat five is where you really start to get the drag if you're used to the airbus that's about flat two um, but let's just uh, not talk too much in tutorials we're gonna be very low now so yeah, it's decelerating very slowly. Pretty good actually, pretty good. So that's all for today's video. I hope it's been interesting for you. This has been uh, my look at the Horizon Simulation 787-9 modification for the Boeing 787 Dreamliner in Microsoft Flight Simulator. As I said at the start, this is freeware. It's really, really fantastic. It gives the life to the visual model that I was so hoping we would, uh, we would see arrive. Uh, it's also a great representation of the 787-9 and thanks to those built-in uh, default avionics which are now very good it is a, a very usable d uh, aircraft in the simulator i really really like it i especially am impressed with their handling of the aircraft on the ground uh, and some of the performance and we're going to test that out more on the channel as we go through uh, the tutorials and streams of this aircraft if you'd like to see more streams or tutorials of this aircraft do please subscribe otherwise we'll see you again in another video or live stream soon thank you for watching Bye bye